Hello everyone. This is Heian Lee from Maidas IT headquarters. Uh, we are going to have the webinar on assessment of PSC bridges as per CS454. CS454 is the new standard for the assessment of highway and structure. And we are going to see details of this code and also how it has been implemented in Maidas server. This is the contents we will go through today. I'll briefly introduce about uh, details of CS454, the standard, and we will see how it has been implemented in MIDAS server for the assessment live load and assessment verification. And I will also show you with MIDAS server software how we can work with this. CS454 has been released last year, June, as revision number zero and it has been uh, more updates and newly released in March with revision one. This standard supersedes existing standards such as BD21, BA16, and BD37. It includes wind load, thermal, and HA, HB load model in new appendix which was previously available in BD37. And also it has a small modification. For example, the traffic load model with the loaded length greater than 50. It was previously available in BD50 and now it is available inside of CS454. Also it has increased the, the lane width for all model one. With this, CS454, additional standards like CS455, CS458 would be used all together. And they have been also newly released. Previously for the special vehicles, it was available in BD86. And now most of the vehicle itself is quite similar, but the code has been newly arranged in CS458. Similarly, for the assessment of concrete bridge, it was available in BD44, and you can see those related standard, and now it has been merged and newly arranged in CS455. So with this change, MIDAS server has newly implemented this standard. Chart shows the assessment process available in CS454. So, in your practical work, when you are working with the assessment project, you will start from the structural review and then inspection for the assessment and doing the real assessment work. And then you will work for the reporting. And if needed, you will work for management of substandard structure and the strengthening and replacement. And finally, periodic inspection and maintenance. What we cover today and what, we co what is covered in my data server is this part, assessment calculation, and help you to complete the report for the assessment. In the new standard, and also even for the existing standard or on the world, the assessment load could be classified into those. Firstly, we will have the normal traffic, which is written as all model one and two in CS454. And with the agreement with the overseeing organization, we may use restricted traffic. Those are available also in all model one with those uh, restricted weights. And also if needed, we can, we need to use abnormal traffic which is STGU or SO vehicles, and also HB load model. And all those vehicles are available in my data server. And especially for the new standard, all model one and two, I would like to focus today more. Engineers also need to specify the levels of assessment. Level one would be mostly common type, simple structural analysis methods, and it would be 
conservative assumption for the material property. And if needed, we, you may need to go to level two, which is refined structural analysis method in required nonlinear and plastic analysis method. And level three will be the using the property, material property derived from the test sample of the structure. We will focus on level one for today's demonstration. Finally, you need to uh, go for the assessment verification, which is comparing the RA star and SA star. It is also written in the CS454 standard. So what we do is simply comparing the resistance and the action effect. RA star stands for re assessment resistance. And in the, it is the function, as you can see from here, like the considering the condition factor and also the partial factor for the material strength and use the characteristic. It could be normal or worst credible strength of material. And for calculating the SA star, which is assessment action effect, we can obtain it using the gamma F3, which is partial factor for the load effect. And also in calculation of the action, we can we also need to consider the partial factor for load, which is called gamma F3. I will show you how those are implemented also in my server. Typical assessment reports uh, needs to include those information, introduction about the structure and structure description, previous assessment summary with dates, interim measures summary with dates, and monitoring summary with dates, assessment inspection summary, assessment method commentary, and the part related to the MIDA civil calculation would be this one. So we can obtain the values of appropriate assessment load effect, which considering the all the loads together due to the dead load, due to the uh, normal and due to the special vehicles. And program will also give you the assessment resistance and those adequate factor and reserve factor. Using the result my decibel provides you, you will be able to make your report more easily in order to meet this requirement. Adequate factor and the reserve factor is obtained from those equations. And this can be also checked in detail in MS Excel formal report. I will show you during my demonstration. Assessment live loads. The normal vehicle is classified into two in CS454. One is all model one, the other one is all model two, and either of the two models can be used. So normally we expect all model two to be used for the general type of the bridges. But if engineer expect all model one would give more critical effect, you can you also need to verify all model one as well. All model one is based on rear vehicles with authorized weight. It can be a single vehicle or it can be convoy of vehicles. It is suitable for all type of the structures. In case of all model two, it is UDL and knife edge load. So it is very similar to HA loading from BD21. Even though all model two would be used in general, but there is some restriction. 
that we cannot use our model to for the structures with transversely spanning through deck and structure with longitudinal members at center of 2.5 meter or less with low transverse distribution and also structure with loaded length of less than two meter. In those structure, we are not able to use our model two, so model one needs to be used. If we see more details about our model one, so as just mentioned, it is both case can be applicable and more critical case needs to be used. In this our model one, those factors will be used. Three impact factor which is differently applied for the single axle and the combo axle and by the surface type. And traffic flow factor among high traffic, medium and low traffic, different factor will be used and lane factor. Lane numbering concept is same as the previous standard. So most critical lane will have a lane number one and accordingly the number will be determined and lane factor will be determined as you can see from here in order to determine those factors so and the type of the vehicle we can specify from our mida civil dialog box whether my vehicle will be single or combined and surface will be good or poor traffic Flow category will be high, medium, or low. Uh, currently, we are on the verification of this old model one, and it will be available in 1st of June. In the Appendix B, so it has all the details of the different vehicles, including normal traffic and the restricted traffic. So for the normal traffic and restricted traffic, we can select the desired loss type and then it will be applied accordingly as specified in this table. This is all model two. All model two is a combined unit uniform load with the knife at load as shown in this figure. And also there could be typed a single axle load, but it is not supported in my server currently. It would be used in the local model and for the verification of a deck. So we expect it is not generally used for the um, global bridge model. So it is not available currently with my server. When we determine the value of the loading, as shown in this table, loaded length is needed and that is automatically calculated from the software and then applied. In order to apply K factor, also we need to know what is my traffic and surface category and load level. So those can be specified by the user from this field and then corresponding loading value will be applied. Uh, when we uh, check the assessment verification equation previously, it was uh, showing that we need to consider the partial factor for action, which is called the gamma FL. And this is required for obtaining the design member force, assessment member force. However, as you can see from this table, the factor needs to be differently applied for the ULS case and SLS case. And also depending on the combination number, different factor needs to be applied. Due to this reason, uh, when we specify the desired type in moving mode case, like we specify CS454, and then my this moving mode case is for ultimate limit state and combination number one. In this case, for example, this factor 1.5 for the normal traffic, 
and 1.1 for the special vehicle will be automatically applied and reflected in the analysis lizard. So those gamma FR is automatically applied in the moving node analysis lizard. Moving to the assessment verification implemented in MIDA server. Under the rating menu, we now have the new standard CS454. Uh, firstly, we can specify the related parameter. Condition factor can be entered from here, and we can specify my material strengths, whether I will use characteristic strengths or worst credible strengths. And also the partial factor for material can be specified from here. It is automatically entered according to the standard, and if needed, we can modify the value and click OK. And what will be verified during this calculation? Program will provide you the ultimate limit state and serviceability limit state verification. In the ultimate limit state, flexion, shear, torsion will be verified. For the service limit state, stress and crack will be verified. We also need to define the reinforcements in order to consider them in the our resistance calculation. So under this section manager reinforcements, we can specify the reinforcement for the longitudinal lever and the shear lever, torsion lever as well. And we can specify the material strengths for the concrete and reinforcement and define the load combination for the assessment. Classify the limit state type, whether it will be ultimate limit state or service limit state, and also combination type, combination one to four. And uh, gamma F3 factor, which is factor for the assessment action, partial factor for assessment action, and also a load factor gamma FR is specified here. In case of the moving load case, which is combined between the standard vehicle and the special vehicle together, in this case, as I just mentioned, the factor gamma FR needs to be differently applied for the different load type and different type of the combination because of that reason. So once we select this auto moving node case and select that corresponding load moving node case, this field will be grayed out and gamma FR will be automatically applied. So we do not need to enter any value for the gamma FR as it is applied according to the standard automatically. If we, uh, this load combination is for the assessment verification. So if we want to check the lizards member force in our MyDiceable post processing, we can click this button, copy into general load combination button. It means under the lizards, there is load combination menu and under the general tab, load combination will be copied and it is also classifying the dead load, live load, and the combination between dead and live. So we can have all different load combination under this combination lizard and check the lizards in the post-processing of MIDA server. And if we need to generate the multiple load combination, instead of we define them one by one, we can select one load combination, existing load combination, and if we click this copy button, then it will copy as you can see from here. So for 
inside of this menu, if you need to make the several different load combination, you can copy it and then simply modify desired part only. Now we can define the sections for the assessment check and report. Since it takes quite a long time to do the calculation and printing out the MX Excel format report, so we can specify desired elements only to do this calculation. And when we specifying the members, also we can specify the class category. This class category is used in order to determine the stress limit in service limit state verification. As you can see, different uh, class limitation will be applied and it is following based on your selection from here. Class three is under verification at this moment and it is also available from June 1st. After doing the calculation, program will provide you two different types of research. One is table format, the other one is MS Excel format report. For the flexure verification, program used the stress strain uh, compatibility using this parabolic curve, which is provided uh, from CS454. Uh, and you can see more details how it is calculated from the program and check whether it is satisfied or not. If any of the value is not satisfied, they will be printed out as NG and they will be marked in light color. For the share verification, program will verify firstly whether the section is correct under the flexure or not and then depending on the correct or not the different concrete strengths will be used and also verify whether shear link is valid or not and then determine whether shear link is used or not and finally also maximum shear is verified as well in order to re, uh, prevent the crashing failure due to the shear. So after that, we can obtain the resistance assessment and action effect and action due to the dead load, action effect due to the standard vehicle, and action effect, this is the summation of all those three. First one was the action due to the special vehicle and adequate factor and the reserve factor. So all those can be obtained by the program. And torsion verification. Torsion verification will be skipped for the open type section like the composite I or composite T shape. It will be used, uh, calculated for the closed section like the pre-stressed box gutter or the U-shape, composite U-shape gutter. And the calculation procedure is also following the standard of verifying the maximum ultimate torsion stress, and then check whether the torsion lever is needed or not, and then corresponding uh, torsional strength will be calculated, and stress due to the torsion, stress due to the shear force will be calculated, and finally verify it with the strengths. Finally, for the service limit state, Similarly, this results table is provided current uh, uh, stress and stress limit and compare between two and also tension stress and the tension limitation and compare it and also adequate factor 
and then mark whether the section is okay or not. As we selected the class one for my section, so their limits, they are not allowed to have the tension stress. So it is marked as zero for the tension limitation. And all those details can be verified from this MS Excel format report. I will show you details with program. So this is a skewed composite gutter bridge. And main gutter shape is I section. And it has three different construction states, starting from the stage one, which is before composite section. And stage two is after composite section. And stage three is for the long-term effect. It has a dead load and the surfacing load, parapet load and Tendon is entered, as you can see, on the bottom of the section. In order to consider the debonding on first those beginning and end parts, strand has not been entered on that debonding part for, as you can see, some tendons the strains are entered only in the middle. It means the, we want us to consider the debonding for those strains. From this section, we want to uh, consider the moving node analysis with the new standard, and then we will enter the assessment related features and check the results. Firstly, for the moving node, I will specify the moving node code as BS. And then I will define the lanes. I will use the cross beam type, and this has the skew, sorry, degree. By entering this, we can have one lane, and accordingly, I will enter the lanes additionally. And lane number three with different eccentricity. And finally, in lane number four, So four different lanes has now been defined. And now I want to define the vehicle. New standard or model two can be selected under this CS454 assessment and or model two can be selected here. I will use the high traffic with surface category floor and load level as four key to calculate the K factor. And also I'm going to use the special vehicle as V80 and I will combine it with my old load model too. Go to the moving load case. 
I will define two different moving node case, one for ultimate limit state, combination number one. And I will also consider the straddling between two vehicles as I have the special vehicle here. And one more moving node case for the service limit state. So different gamma FL value will be used in this case. And okay. And moving node definition is now added. And I want to also consider the concurrent force effect. So I will just click. Okay. I'm moving to the rating. Go to rating and we can specify CS454. And here we can specify condition factor and characteristic or worst credible strengths for the material strengths. I will just use the same uh, partial safety factor for the material entered here. And all those will be verified. For the material, we can specify from those. So for the main gutter, I will use the grade C5060. And for the reinforcement, class B will be used. For the slab, grade C3545. And similarly for the slab lever, class B. Now I want to define the load combination. I will define one load combination for the ULS and their gamma F3 factor will be 1.1. I will have dead load and surface and tendon secondary. Dead load for 1.1. An erection load for the 1.75 and tendon secondary for 1.1. And I will select the moving load case here. And as I mentioned, since gamma FL is automatically considered a moving load case, so I do not need to define any value for here. I will have one more load case load combination, SLS. Change the type as SLS and it will be used in the service assessment verification. Gamma F3 factor is 1.0. And I will have that erection, tendon primary and secondary with all factors as one. And this time, Moving node case as one, uh, service moving node case as one. Okay. Then next step is defining which member I want to verify for the assessment check. So I will want to select one first together here and I will verify both I end and J end of each member. And we can specify the class category from here. Applied. And you can even check the from the table. And for the report, MS Excel formal report, it takes another time. So I will just specify these two. So all, all the input has been completed. Now I would like to move to the other model file, which I already performed the analysis. So we do not need to wait for the result. Firstly, I will, this is the exactly same model we just made and I will show you analysis result first.
we have uh, ultimate limit state and service limit state moving node case. And we can see how the vehicles are applied. As we can see in the first lane, special vehicle has been applied and for the other lanes, all model two has been applied and point load and uh, UDL is applied as you can see. And for the different element, we can see how the loading is applied. And as I mentioned, the value, the analysis result already consider the gamma FL factor. And moving to the rating result, rating calculation has already been done. So if we go to table result first, we can see this is the flexural reserve factor. So flexural resistance and then flexural action effect due to the special vehicle, dead load, standard vehicle, and those three summation would be this one, and add cost factor, and the reserve factor is considered from here. Similarly for the shear force lizards. So we can verify our members from those table format. We have for just one member, for example, as you can see from this element one part is I end. But you have, you can see the all different types. That's because concurrent force is used in the calculation. So in, during the calculation, program automatically takes the concurrent force and most critical, um, if any of those among those concurrent force is not satisfied, they will be printed out. Also for the service limit state, if any part is not satisfied, they will be shown with this red color NG. So we can verify compression stress and tension stress and add cost factor. And if we click this print assessment report, then report will be shown as you can see from this MS Excel format. So summary, And then another uh, summary table for certain element, for example, element number five. Break share, reserve factor, share, torsion for the open section, it was skipped and service. And then we can see more details. What is the section property for the growth section, transform the section, and partial factor used during the calculation for the ultimate limit state, service limit state, and tendon information, and uh, also liver, longitudinal liver information. And during the flexure design, as I mentioned, Parabolic stress strain compatibility has been used and from the program, neutral axis has been calculated and correspond using this uh, neutral axis uh, corresponding strength has been calculated. And it is compared with the member force and check whether a section is okay or not. Verify both positive and negative moment if exist. And verify shear as well. Firstly, verify whether my section is cracked or not. And then corresponding concrete resistance will be used. Like the, for the cracked section, VCL will be used. 
and also verify whether shear link is valid or not. If valid, shear river will also be used in the calculation of shear resistance. And also maximum shear is verified as well. And then verify based the member force. So obviously limit state also we verify for the tension and the compression stress from the analysis and with the limitation value from the code, those are compared. So as you could see from this MS Excel format, program update is the vehicles, but not only for the vehicles. We have implemented all those calculations for your assessment report, and it would be useful to reduce your time and you can verify whether program gives you correct value or not. If not, you can check also details from this MX Excel formal report to verify um, how those values have been calculated from the software. And in addition, I mentioned we are on the verification for the uh, all model one, and it will be available from June first. This is beta version of all model one. And as you can see, so now you will have all model one and two, and you will have the selection whether all model one will be single or convoy, and all those selection like the normal vehicles and the restricted vehicles, we can go for the desired load and then use it for your analysis. So that's it for the today's webinar. If you have any question, please feel free to ask us. Thank you very much for your attention.